The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's role play session with your host, James McDonald. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. I'd like to start by welcoming our participants to our role play session. Super excited today. Uh, we're going to do some role playing with everybody. We're going to take questions. We're going to focus exclusively, as we do every Thursday, on the universal callback script and um, everything to do with lead conversion. Uh, over the phone. And I wanted to start, well, a couple things. First, I wanted to start by reminding everyone that tomorrow is our uh, marketing session, our ad clinic session. So if you have any ads that you'd like us to take a look at, maybe some ads that you sent to your coach, why don't you upload them to the ad clinic file? That would be really helpful. And then we'll look at them tomorrow, uh, Craig and I, on the, uh, on the ad clinic session, and we'll... Um, We'll critique what you're doing and offer you some really helpful, constructive suggestions as to what you might want to test next to uh, further improve the ad uh, or whatever marketing piece it is that you're doing. So we'll do that tomorrow. Don't forget to do that. And, uh, and that webinar will be at 8 o'clock Pacific time, 11 Eastern, tomorrow Friday. Okay, now, today, though, I want to begin um, by uh, answering an email question that was, uh, that was sent to me this week. Uh, I had some uh, some half day seminars this week, and so I wasn't able to answer this question on the fly. But I thought, hey, you know what? This would be the perfect form to answer it for everybody. And it was in regards to getting prospects on the phone, and just highlighting all of the tips that revolve around how, when we're following up with our prospects. How do we maximize the number of prospects that are that we're actually going to reach and speak to on the phone? Because you know, you and I know that, you know, in reality, um, we're not going to get every prospect answering the phone on the very first attempt. But there are definitely things that we can do to increase the odds of reaching the prospect, if not the very first time, then certainly within, you know, two or three uh, attempts of reaching them. So I want to highlight all of those uh, right now. And the first thing, the first reality is this, okay? We talk about how important it is that you call the prospect back as quickly as possible. But here's the real uh the, the real um, uh, uh, thing to remember, for lack of better words, the whole idea of allowing the prospect to request the information on your website is so, or on your hotline is that we get to follow up with the prospect at our convenience. That's the whole benefit of this, so that you get to have a life. And Craig really emphasizes that. So if you're... Uh, you know, if you're on date night with your spouse and someone requests information, you don't leap up, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the movie theater and run out to the parking lot to call a prospect back. The whole idea of doing it this way is that the prospect can request the information at their convenience and you get to follow up with the prospect at your convenience. You've generated the lead and you've generated that lead while you're having a life. So this is the benefit of doing it this way. So if you were to leap up and run out into the parking lot and call the prospect back, might that be better? Yeah, it might be, but what's the future in that? To, to demonstrate to everybody in your life that, that this comes first and this is priority over everything else. Here's the honest truth. Craig didn't do it that way. So we know that if Craig could sell 550 homes a year not doing it that way, then we can have success and have a life at the same time and follow up with the prospects at our convenience. Now, here's what that means. If it's 9 o'clock in the evening or 10 o'clock in the evening and somebody requests information, maybe you would be available to follow up with them immediately at that time. But here's the idea. What if instead we followed up with the prospect the next day? The next morning at, uh, you know, you set aside time from 10 in the morning to 11 in the morning to follow up with any leads that you may have generated the night before. And the, the reality is you may not have equal success in reaching those prospects at 10 in the morning as you would have had had you called them that evening at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. That, that very well may be true. But, but we're going to call the prospects back at our convenience because, you know, what Craig talks about more than anything else, having a life is very, very important right? and having balance. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, number one, here are the tips in order. What is most important is that we call the prospect back from a local phone number. The reason being is that everybody has call display. So when you call the prospect back, they are going to look at their phone. They're going to look at the phone. And they're going to look at the phone to see who is calling them. And when they look down on the phone and it says Remax, 
they ain't answering the phone. When they look down and it says blocked number, they ain't answering the phone. They're going to let it go to voicemail. What, under what circumstance might they answer the phone? What if it was a local telephone number? What if it was a local telephone number um, and, uh, um, and they recognize the, the local area code and prefix of the phone number? What their brain would say is, well, clearly this isn't a solicitation. This is a personal call. Would everybody answer the phone if the call display indicated a local phone number? No, no, not everybody, but most would. Most would. And um, this is what this is all about. It's differentiating ourselves from a pest. Think of it that way. We need to differentiate ourselves from a pest. A pest calls from a blocked number. A pest calls from a sales company. A pest calls and it and it hides by saying private number that's that I know that if I answer that call I guarantee you it's going to be a pest and I'm always right when my phone rings and it says blocked or it's like a bunch of eights on the line or uh, you know it, it's something like that private number and I make the mistake of answering the call it's always a pest and I live to regret it instead though if I let that go to voicemail and I say, hey, if it's important, they'll leave a message. I'll listen to who it is. If it's important enough, I'll call them back. But here's the difference. If it's a local telephone number, I'm not thinking it's a pest. I'm thinking it's somebody that I know. It's local. There's somebody in my community. It's like a friend or a neighbor or one of my kids' parents or something. But it's a local telephone number. I'm far more likely to answer that call because it's not a pest. Okay. Now, what if I don't answer the phone, though? What's the strategy? Okay, so watch this. I do not answer the phone and I say, well, I'm busy right now. I'll let it go to voicemail. But here's the thing. You don't leave a voicemail. You do not leave a voicemail because if you leave a voicemail, they're going to listen and all they're going to hear is it's, it's you, the realtor, calling. Whereupon they're like, well, I'm not in the habit of calling salespeople. They will not call you back as has been demonstrated over and over and over again. And if somebody says, well, there is, you know, one time they called me back. Okay, but watch this. We can get more of them to call you back if you don't leave a message. And if you do, so this is what we tested. We tested leaving different messages, and then we measured the rate of callbacks that we received. Then we tested not leaving any message at all and testing the rate of callbacks. So watch this. We got more prospects calling us back on our number, on our unblocked number, when we didn't leave a message than when we did. Want to know why people call back? Who is this? That's why. Because you didn't leave a message, they want to know who this is. Maybe they missed something. Maybe it was important. What if you did this? What if you called the prospect back, it went to voicemail, you hung up. A couple of minutes later, you redialed the number again. Picture yourself as that prospect. You're looking down at your call display. There's a call. It's a local number. You're busy. You're whatever. You let it go to voicemail. They do not leave a message. A few minutes later, the phone rings. Same number again. Might you answer that? Would everybody answer it under that circumstance? Nope. Would some? Yep. Absolutely some will. If you're doing an awesome job of reaching your prospects, it probably means you're reaching 75 to 80% of them. That means that anywhere from 20% to 25% of the leads you generate with phone numbers, you'll never reach because they will never answer the phone. We, we understand that going into this. So we're going to focus on the ones that do answer the phone. If we generated 2,000 leads a year, and that meant that we were only going to reach 1,500 of them, well, we're going to focus on 1,500, the easy ones, the ones that are willing to answer the phone, not the ones that we have to chase uh, you know, uh, around the playground. The, they're the hard ones. We're interested in the easy ones, cherry picking the easy ones, the ones that answer the phone. But having said that, we have to understand and have a structure of where it's most likely that the prospect is going to answer the phone. Okay, some other things. Um, when you call, um, if, if you call your prospect back in the morning and you don't reach them, then maybe try in the evening. In other words, try them at different times of day. Um, try them back at the time that they requested the information. So if they request the information at 9 o'clock at night, then maybe the next night at 9 o'clock at night, if you had trouble reaching them during the day, you can try them uh, at that exact same time the next day. And that often works. You know they're you know, obviously the, it's, it's downtime for them. So those are some other things that you can do as well. But by far, by far, call display is, um, is what is, sorry. So here's the test you want to do. 
from your cell phone, let's say, call yourself, maybe call your home number and see what shows up on the caller ID. And um, so you know what your prospects see when you call. And what you want it to display is you want it to display area code and local phone number. And that way it is not a pest, it's a personal call. Just like, here's the same concept. You know how Craig says, when you're gonna mail information, put it in a plain white number 10 envelope, hand address it and put a live stamp on it. Why, why, why do you do it that way? Well, simple, because it looks like a letter from a friend. And the question is, will it get opened? Would you open an envelope in a plain white number 10 envelope, handwritten with a live stamp on it? Would you open that? And everybody says, yeah, I'd open that. Why? Because it's clearly not a pest. It's not solicitation. That's why you'd open it. Well, this is the same thing. Would you answer this phone call? It doesn't look like a pest. It's not solicitation. It's a local phone number. You'd be far more likely to answer that call. So that's what, exactly what you want to do now. If, before we even talk about what we would say to the prospect in this universal script, we need to get them on the phone. There are some of you right now on the webinar who are generating more than ample prospects. You're generating more than ample leads every single day. Your problem is you're only reaching 20% of them. So to focus on generating more prospects or to focus on getting better at the universal callback script is kind of fixing what isn't broken. What we'd have to fix is, how do we get you from 20% reach to 80% reached? If you reached 80% of your prospects instead of 20, you could pr pretty much say anything you wanted to on the phone, and you'd, you'd be ahead of the game as to where you are now. So this is something that we've got to consider is, in your process, where is this working well, and where is it breaking down? And for a lot of, particularly you know, when you're newer with this, the prospects that you reach, the percentage of the leads you generate that you actually reach and have conversations with is low. And we've got to get it up there to a much higher level. And these are some of the strategies that you want to implement to do that. Um, okay, so that very, uh, hopefully in a detailed way, answers my email question this week in terms of how do we reach prospects. But we're certainly not limited to only discussing that. We can talk about anything you like, as long as it has to do with uh, lead conversion and the universal script. So Andrea, our lovely operator, um, why don't we take some chat questions that maybe revolve around what we just discussed here, and then we'll take some volunteers to do some role playing. Okay, Dom Dominique chat, uh, chatted in, do you have a voicemail on that phone you would prospect from if they called back and you couldn't answer? What happened if the prospect was routed? Now, I don't understand. Okay, okay go No, ahead. I do. I do. Okay, so imagine this. Um, the prospect calls you back. In other words, they actually call you. They were, they're like, who the heck's that number? Damn, they didn't leave a voicemail. Mm, maybe I should call that number and find out. Okay, I want to ask every one of you on the webinar right now. Have you ever done that? Have you ever redialed a missed call? And everyone's going, yeah, of course I have. You may not do it every day, but we've all done that. So why did you do that? Because you wanted to know who it was that was calling you. Okay, now, um, here's the thing. When they called you back, though, you were on the phone, right? You were on, you were on the line, and, um, and you were uh, not available to take their call. So it went to voicemail, your voicemail on your cell phone or whatever number you called them from. So now... They're going to hear who it is because on your voice, no, you're going to identify who you are. But they called you back. So, um, you know what? I mean, you could set it up so that it said, you know, sorry, I missed your call. Leave a message. But then other people who are calling your cell phone, your clients, etc., they also would hear the exact same message. So that would be – you'd have to set up two different numbers. You know, the bottom line is this. If they call you back – um, we're either going to answer the phone or if not, we're going to immediately return their call. The bottom line is they took action and they called us back. So, you know, we're, we're well ahead of the game. Um, if you had a separate number that you only used for lead conversion, then you could just set it up so that if they were to get a voicemail, it would simply say, you know, I'm sorry, I missed your call. You know, please leave a message at the tone. I'll get, get right back to you without identifying you know who you are, but generally, if you're calling from your cell phone, 
you're going to identify who you are and they're going to hear that. So you want to be available to take their call. Bottom line is if they called you back, that's the that's a good I mean that that's a sign of motivation. So you want to get back with them right away. Uh, okay, what what who's next? Okay. A couple of our members are asking, so you've called and maybe you've um didn't leave a voicemail or what have you, but you still can't get a hold of these leads or prospects. You've tried several times. What's the next step? Do you remove them? Do you delete them? No, Do you send no, a voice never email? No, no advantage to deleting anyone. Um, because your 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 database will hold an unlimited number of prospects, so it would be helpful to know that you tried to reach someone six times and were unable to reach them. That way, if they requested information, you know, two months later, it'd be good to to know, hey, this person requested information two months ago. I tried to reach them half a dozen times and I was unable to. You might find that helpful to know, so that you don't go through that again with the prospect. Right, so don't delete anybody. But here's the, here's how this really works: the more leads you generate, the fewer attempts you can spend on each individual prospect. The fewer leads you generate, the more attempts you can make for any one given prospect. If you only generated one lead a year, you could call them every hour on the hour every day. Right? You could t attempt to reach them a thousand times because they're the only lead you have. So that's exaggerated, but if we if instead we generated 10 leads every day, and if our rule was we always follow up with the newest leads first, well, then you'd only be able to attempt each prospect a very uh, a very limited amount of time. Does that, okay, so I, I hope that makes sense. So the number of leads you generate dictates how many attempts you can make for any one given prospect. Having said that though, you can't call a prospect back once or twice and think, well, I did my part, ball's in your court. You know, obviously, it might take a little more diligence than that. Um, but if you're generating, you know, meaningful leads on a daily basis, three, four, five leads a day, um, then, you know, yeah, you, the more leads you generate, the fewer attempts you can make per prospect. Here's the rule, very simple. Always call the newest leads back first. That's how we judge this. The newest leads get called first. All right, great question. Okay. Um, we have a lot of requests to role play and um, we have a lot of questions. None of them really pertaining to leaving a voicemail or um, we have kind of addressed all those. So where would you like to go to next? Do you want to go ahead and start role playing? Yeah, let's do some role playing. Okay. Um, we have Brian with the last initial K. That's how he has to be addressed. So Brian, your line is now open. Special K. Yes. Hi, James. How are you? How are you doing, Brian? Very good, very good. I want to role play uh, for a postcard that I'm sending for find out what the homes in your neighborhood are sold for. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, good. Uh, All so right. Ring, ring. Hello. Oh, uh, is James there? Yeah, this is James. Who's this? Oh, hi, James. Uh, this is Brian from Remax, and the reason I'm calling is because I received your request for the information that you wanted, and I'm about to put it in the mail for you. Is that okay, James? Yeah. Um. The the information. Uh. Was was that about the um, was that about the uh, the the driveway sealant that I called about? No, it was about the neighborhood sales. You were interested in knowing what the homes in neighborhoods are sold for. Oh, that, oh, that information. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. That one, James. Um, um, James, are you folks planning on making a move in next three to six months? Uh, we're thinking about it. You're thinking about it, and if you were to move, would you be staying in the area or moving out of the area? We would be staying in the area. In the area. And when do you think that might be, James? Uh, well, we're just looking around. We're just really early in the process. We're, we're looking around. We're seeing what's, what's out there. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe next year. All right. Uh, James, do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? Uh, well, we've got, I mean, obviously the, the realtor that, uh, that helped us buy this house, um, and we've met a couple agents at open houses, uh, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, a couple, a couple, one of them is sending us properties, uh, they seem nice, but, you know, no, nothing, we're not really that far in the process yet. You're not that far, okay. Would you prefer to buy before listing, James, or you want to sell first? Uh, we'd have to do it both at the same time. Uh, we'd have to, you know, obviously we need we need our equity from this home to buy our next home, so we would do both at the same time. All right. 
Uh, James, would you like to get a free market evaluation uh, to determine what your home actually sells for in this market? Also, I can give you some tips on what to do and what not to do to sell your home for the most amount of money, and we can go over um, also go over some closing costs that you might incur so you know exactly how much you'll be left with in your pocket. It's a free of charge service, and there's no obligation. Does that interest you? Uh, yeah, um, that is that is what I had requested online. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's what we want to know is the, the uh, an estimate of value for our property. So I was just hoping to get that online. Well, yes, uh, James, I have time today at 3 o'clock or would after dinner around 7.30 works better for you. No, I'm. Uh, we're busy today. You're busy today. Uh, how about tomorrow? I'm open tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, no, I'm at work at 10 o'clock. You have work. How about the weekend? Sounds like you're a super busy guy, right? How about Saturday? Anytime Saturday, I'm open um, for 11 o'clock. I'm not sure. I'd have to talk to my wife and uh, and and schedule with her. I'm not. I'm not positive. Okay, James. So you know what? You're on the phone and you're a super busy guy. Why don't we be the right thing? Why don't we set up something for Saturday afternoon, let's say around three o'clock? And you can check the schedule with your wife. If it does not work with her schedule, you can always call back and we will reschedule or cancel it. Would that be okay? Uh, sure, we can do that. Okay, so I'll pencil you down for 3 o'clock on Saturday, and we'll see you then. Okay, perfect. Okay, so Thanks Brian, a yeah. lot, of, lot of things we've got to address. So I want to, instead of starting from the beginning, we're going to start from the end and work backwards. First of all, do you see how awkward it is when you try to throw out some times to me? Like you're you're telling me when you're available, um, and I'm not. It's just like no, 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 no. And it just it's totally unnecessary to do it that way. I promise you that nothing in the script is there by accident. Everything is there for a very specific reason. So if I say to you, "Hey Brian, what's better for you, days, evenings, or weekends?" Now, now I'm not giving you a time. I'm letting you come up with the time. Brian, what's better for you, days, evenings, weekends? Now you say weekends. I say, great, what's better, Saturday or Sunday? You say Saturday. Great, what's better, something earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon? You say, I make it feel like you're picking the time. But if you say to me, I'm available Saturday at 10, I'm like, well, good for you. I'm not. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to go through every time of day that you're available and just have me go, no, no, no? It will never work, and all that happens is now you've pushed me to make this appointment at 3 o'clock, but honestly, as the prospect, I would feel like um, you're a pushy salesperson. Honestly, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't make me feel like you're the provider of information um, when you're pushing me to do something that I don't want to do or that is awkward. I didn't tell you I was available at 3 o'clock on Saturday. You said you're available 3 o'clock on Saturday. I didn't say I was. And, and so, and the point is, it's unnecessary, right? Okay, let's let's turn the tables. You're the prospect, um, Brian. When would be a good, convenient time for you? Days, evenings, or weekends? Oh, uh, weekends work better for me. Oh yeah, what's better, Saturday or Sunday for you? Uh, no, Sundays we have things to do. How about Saturday? Okay, what would be better? Something earlier in the morning before noon, or later on in the afternoon? Not too early. Afternoon is okay. Afternoon, uh, early afternoon around 1 o'clock or later on after 3? Later on after 3. Okay, so um, uh, why don't I pencil you in for 3 o'clock and uh, we'll get together then and, and uh, I will uh, bring you a detailed uh, home evaluation at that time. We'll take a look at your property. Okay. Right? Like I, and now here's the deal. I made you feel like you picked the time of 3 o'clock on Saturday. Right? You okay. feel, you the prospect, you feel like you're the one that picked the time. But, but I totally guided you in that direction. So everybody wins. I don't, I don't feel like I'm being a, a pushy salesperson. You don't feel like I pushed you into doing something. You feel like you're the one that booked the time. So everybody wins here. And we're not going through, oh, I'm not available then. Because I'm asking you. You tell me when you're available, but I'm trying to sort of narrow you into a, into a reasonable time that isn't six months from now. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, um, 
you got to when you're asking these qualifying questions okay you're determining the timing and motivation you have to really carefully listen to what the prospect is saying okay so one of the things you said was would you prefer to uh, buy your next home before you sell your present home one of the things i mentioned was that i met i met some realtors at open houses over the last few weeks tell me you tell me what was i doing to to have met realtors at open houses over the last few weeks what was i doing just looking or bingo you know that i was looking for properties you know that because i was at open houses i i revealed that to you so your brain goes ah oh. so this guy is going to open houses looking around to see what's available so right away i say hmm and not only that but he's also meeting with agents because one of them is sending him properties so my brain goes this person is looking around right now it sounds like they're maybe not in the market to put their home on the up for sale but they're certainly looking and i know they're looking because they were at an open house so i might be able to say this hey brian you mentioned that you're looking at some open houses, keeping your eyes peeled for properties that are available. Would you like me to email you every day all of the properties as they come on the market from all the different companies that match what you and your family are looking for? That way, you would know about the, those properties, including the great deals that come on the market, as soon as they're available. You wouldn't have to wait until there's an open house or anything like that. It's absolutely free. There's no obligation, and they'll be sitting every day right in your email inbox for free. Would that be helpful for you, Brian? Yes. Well, why don't we do this? I want to do a good job of determining exactly what you're looking for. So if we can sit down for 15 minutes and go over your criteria in detail, then I'll have a good understanding of what you're looking for. But I thought at the same time, I can also take a look at your property and give you a much more detailed, accurate evaluation of what your property would like to sell for. And we can also share helpful tips on what to do and what not to do to better prepare your home for sale to maximize the money that you're going to get in your pocket. It's all free. There's no obligation for you to buy anything or do anything at all. Um, would you find that helpful, uh, Brian? Yeah, uh, yes, I do. All right, what would be good for you, days, evenings, or weekends? Today is what, Thursday? What would be good? Uh, something this week, uh, in, in the evenings, weekends, what would be good? No, we're busy during the week, weekends. Okay, Saturday or Sunday, boom, we book it for 3 o'clock on Saturday. Saturday is okay. Okay, so we've already done this, remember? I booked you at for, for 3 o'clock. Yes. But I want, you to, I, I, I want you to remember this. We have to listen to what the prospect is, is, is saying that they're doing. The question, would you like to buy first or sell first? Really what we're asking is this. Would you like to look first or would you like to put your home up for sale first? Correct. And if they say, no, we'd like to look around first, here's what your brain says. Hey, I can help them with that. I can help you with that. Because here's the deal. You booked a listing appointment with me, but I'm not listing my home. I haven't even found anything yet. So you're booking an appointment that may well not be the, um, the best way to convert me. Now, fortunately, when you come over and, and meet with me on Saturday or whenever it is, um, and I'm more of an opportunity to share my moving plans, you can then convert me as a buyer. You can you know, pivot to the buyer presentation and you can get me signed as a buyer. That would be, that would be fine as well. Thanks for volunteering, Brian. I hope that was helpful for you. That was great. Thank you, James. Our next guest is Colleen Goodell. Your line is open. Hello, Colleen. I might have Strong gotten my I might have gotten my names mixed up. Austin Goodell. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am good. This is Lynn Goodale. I'm with Austin, but Lynn's on the roll play this morning. Hi, Lynn. How are you today? Oh, I'm just fine. How are you, James? Excellent, excellent. What would you like to do this morning? Um, a home evaluation uh, for uh, a property in Power Ranch in Gilbert. Okay, perfect. So, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is James there? Uh, yeah, this is James. Hi, James. This is Lynn Goodale with JK Realty, and the reason I'm calling is I received your request for the information about your 
home on Thunderheart in Power Ranch, and I wanted to get that over to you. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, thank you. Looking forward to it. Okay. And James, are you planning on making a move in the next three to six months? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we. Um, I've been transferred, so yeah, in the next few months we're going to be doing something. Okay. And um, so you're being transferred, so you're moving out of the local area, huh? Yeah, yeah, we're um, up going to uh, San Jose, California. Okay, and, and when did you say that might be, James? Uh, in the next three months, 90 days. Um, yeah, so oh. uh, at the latest, you know, by the 1st of January kind of thing. Okay, and do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? Well, um, my company uh, has like a relocation program, and I haven't really looked into it too much as of yet, um, but no, not really. Okay. All right. Um, well, James, would you like a free market evaluation to determine what your home would sell for? Also, I can go over uh, tips on what to do and what not to do to sell your home for the most amount of money, and we can go over all the various closing costs you'll incur and you'll know exactly what you'll have left in your pocket after all expenses. It's free of charge and obligates you to nothing. Does that sound helpful? Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I guess we were hoping just to get sort of like a preliminary idea right now before we um, really dive headlong. I'm actually in the middle of some projects um, sure. that I'm just finishing up, so I don't know how that would affect it. Well, um, what, what I'm proposing to do, James, is uh, I'm sending you out a snapshot of homes in your neighborhood that you'll receive here shortly. Um, but what I propose to do is um, to give you a market evaluation that will determine exactly what your home would sell for. And at that time, we'll go over tips on what to do and what not to do to get your home sold for the most amount of money. And um, it's a free service, of course, and you're never obligated to um, anything. Does that sound helpful? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay. And when's a good time to get together, days or evenings? Uh, probably uh, evenings is best, any time after 6. Okay. All right. And would this evening or tomorrow evening work good for you, Jane? Um, yeah, tomorrow evening is probably better. Okay. And uh, would uh, 6 or 7 be better for you? Um, yeah, any time after 6 Okay. Is fine. So, so we can schedule 7 o'clock then uh, sure. tomorrow evening? Yeah, okay, that's fine. So Okay, sounds great, James. Well, we'll see you tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. And again, um, we'll uh, at that time we'll do the free market evaluation. I'll go over tips on what you can do and what not to do to sell your home for the most amount of money, and then we'll go over all the various closing costs um, that you'll have, and you'll know exactly what you'll have left in your pocket. And I'll look forward to meeting you tomorrow evening at seven, James. Okay. Um, now, first of all. Um, <laughs> Thank you. No, it's good. It's all good. It's all good. Timing. I like what you did because it was kind of like a uh, on the bubble. In other words, mm, you may have been premature in booking the appointment, but maybe not. Yeah. You know, so you'd, I'd rather err on the side of caution um, and book the appointment under that circumstance. Book the okay. appointment than not book the appointment. If you said to me, "Well, you know what? Why don't uh, you know what? Uh, why don't I follow up with you? When would be a good time?" And I say, well, "Why don't you call me in December?" But you know what's going to happen? You call me in December, and I'm already listed, right? Mm -hmm. That's the pro so I agree. That was I was kind of on the bubble with my timing. I think okay. you did the right thing in booking the appointment. But 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 but, but I but. I sent up a smoke signal that you didn't catch, or at least you didn't respond to it satisfactorily as far as me, the prospect, was concerned. I said to you that I was thinking that maybe the, the appointment was a little premature because I'm in the middle of some projects that I'm finishing up with the property, which oh. would have been perfect opportunity for you to say, stop. Don't do not do anything more with any projects. The purpose of my appointment is I'm going to share with you what you should do and shouldn't do that will have the biggest impact on the sales price of your property. So before spending tons of time on expensive, time-consuming projects, some of them might be really worthy, but some of them might not be. So if I can come and take a look at what you're doing, I can point you in the right direction. In other words, use that as a benefit for the appointment. The whole point of the appointment is to tell you what to do and what not to do. So if I say I'm in the middle of these projects, you say that's perfect. 
then let me take a look and see what you're doing because you know there are some things that you can do that will have a huge impact on the ultimate sales price of your property. And there are other things that are going to be expensive and time consuming and they're not going to have any impact on the sales price of your property. So if I can come on and take a look now, then I can point you in the right direction. The whole thing's free. There's no obligation. What's good for you days, evenings, weekends? I've just used that as a benefit for booking the appointment with me. And you need to listen out for these little things. Right? Okay. Like when a, when a prospect says, yeah, I was scouring the internet and I found, you know, this ad for properties. And then when you say, would you like to receive, a, you know, properties every day that, as they come on the market? And they say, no, you know, I, I'm just looking online. It's like our brain can say to us, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. They told me that they're scouring the internet looking for properties for sale. So I can remind them of that. I can say, you know, earlier on you mentioned that, you know, you look on various websites every day on the internet. The likeliness is that you're going to miss properties that are for sale that aren't on the internet or properties that came up for sale, but you didn't go on the internet that day. What I'm proposing is instead of you doing that, you just check your email inbox. And in other words, I'm going to use what the prospect said to create a benefit for the appointment. Okay. And we can I do that. We can do that more often than not. Okay, yeah, when, when I heard you say that, but quite frankly, James, I'm just still trying to get this, and I was kind of nervous, and I'm just like, That's I just... Okay. You did an my awesome job. No, 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 you did an excellent job, and I'll tell you, here, here's the, the sort of the learning curve on this, is first you master what you're going to say. All right, first things first, what do I say? And I can tell that you're get, you've got that down. All right, or at least you're well on your way to being really comfortable with knowing what you're going to say. Then the next thing is, is once you're comfortable knowing what you're going to say, it allows you to hear what the prospect is saying. But when you're focused so much on, okay, what am I going to say next? What am I going to say next? What happens is you're not really listening to what the prospect is telling you. But as soon as you're really comfortable and it's second nature in terms of what you're going to say, then you can dedicate 100% of your brain to listening to what the prospect is telling you. It's really, really helpful. So, okay. and, that's, and I think that's where you're at right now. You're, yeah. you're making that transition from comfortable with, with what you're going to say uh, and, and now you can start to listen more and more and more. And the more you listen, the more you hear, the better you're going to be at making a recommended action to the prospect based on what they told you. Okay, that sounds great, James. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. Oh, you're very welcome. Great job today. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I thought we'd move on to a couple of questions so we can try to make it even and get some in. We have Douglas, and he's looking for your advice on his guarantee and the benefit of meeting with him. He says he's in Vegas, and he has a lot of out-of-town clients coming in. He says he's using the script, but finds out they're working with another agent but haven't signed anything. He then goes on to his guarantee of $1,500 savings or 500 cash, but he's still losing the clients. What are your thoughts? Um... Well, I mean, I guess my thoughts are you want to know that as soon as you possibly can know it. So, you know, when you're following up, when you get the prospect on the phone, you're asking the question, are you working with another realtor? Like, do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? And they're saying yes. And you're saying, well, are you 100% committed to working exclusively with that realtor? And it's a yes or no. It's, and if you're generating enough prospects, it will be the minority of prospects that say, yes, I'm 100% committed to working with another agency. Here's why. If you're from out of town, then you don't have a relationship, a 100% committed relationship with another realtor. It's not like... It's not like you know them. You don't even live in Las Vegas. You're from out of state, out of the area, and you're purchasing in Las Vegas. So the overwhelming majority of the prospects would say, no, I'm not 100% committed to anybody. Then we can go ahead and we can book the appointment. You know, um, but, but we might as well just find out up front. Now, here's what, what you really are saying to me is I am doing that, but they're not choosing me. Well, that's not the fault of the script. That's the fault of the presentation then. If you're meeting with them and they're electing not to do business with you, then we need to make your presentation better. We need to, we need to sell the merits of your business um, in, a, in, a, in a better, more effective way than what you're currently doing. What you're currently doing 
clearly isn't causing that to happen. They're not feeling like they have to work with you and they need to. So let's, let's kind of compartmentalize what, what is happening here, what the problem is. Now, the second thing is this. We need to establish whether this is the exception or the rule. In other words, if you told me the last 10 prospects I've generated, all 10 of them have worked with someone else, then it's you. That's the rule. If it's the rule, you're doing something that we need to change. If you say, oh, no, 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 um, you know, this happened once or twice before, then it's the exception to the rule. Well, we're not going to change our system because of an exception. Exceptions happen all the time. There are exceptions, though. We're not going to let that, let that affect what we do over and over again. All right, so, um, so take that for, uh, for what it's worth. Okay, our next question comes from Michelle, and Michelle says she's a new realtor, but she um, doesn't have any sales under her belt, and she has no one to help her sponsor the newsletter, so in turn, she doesn't have one. What can she offer if she, since she has no newsletter? Um, you should offer the online, uh, the online newsletter from Success Website. It's an email newsletter. It's generic for the most part, but at least you have something to offer and it will come from you and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's part of the success website. That way you can use the script and I can say to my prospect, um, would you like me to send you my free monthly newsletter? Uh, it's full of great tips on you know, preparing for an eventual move, whatever, buy or sell. Uh, and it's absolutely free and I'd be more than happy to send that out to you every month with a snapshot of homes that are selling um, in your area as well. Would that be helpful to you? Prospect says yes. When would be a good time for me to follow up with you when you might be a little closer to making your move? Uh, call me back in two months. We set a, phone, a call back for one month. Four weeks later, we're going to give them a call back. But at least in the meantime, I can send them the email newsletter and I can keep my promise of sending them information. Okay, so that, that is what you do. You, that way you don't bear the expense yet of, uh, of putting together a hard copy newsletter that you can mail to them. It's an interim thing that you can do that won't cost you any money. Next question. Our next question comes from Kat, and her question is more of a, what would you say to prospects who come with, no, we are looking for an investment property when you're going through the script? Well, perfect. Investment properties go quickly. Um, you know, here's the, here's the reality. Okay? So here's my conversation with the prospect. You know, what I'm going to propose is that you need to know about the best investment deals before the other investors do. Because if you can beat out the other investors to the best opportunities, you'll have a better shot at them. Why don't I do this? If I email you every day all of the very best investment opportunities that come on the market from all the different real estate companies, but more importantly, the hard-to-find investment properties like uh, bank foreclosures, private sales, pocket listings, probates, there are some great investment opportunities that – I know about immediately upon being available. I will email them to you automatically the second they come on the market and it's absolutely free. You don't have to buy any of them. Would that make your search for an investment property helpful? What do you think they'd say to that? Are you kidding me? They'd say, yeah. Great. Let's get together for 50 minutes so I can take down exactly what investment property you're looking for. I got about 40 things that I need to know here, and I've got a form that I'm going to fill out. Don't bring your wallet or checkbook. I don't charge any money for it. Uh, when's a good time for you? Days, evenings, weekends. This is, you got to see, for an investor, this is even better because an investor is looking exclusively for a good deal. So we can say, well, doing what you're doing, which is, you know, combing the internet, trying to find a good deal. You're finding out about properties after they're gone, and the properties that are left are, are already overlooked by all the other investors. So why don't you be the one that finds out about these great deals first? Why, why don't you be the one that knows about the best opportunities before any of the other investors do? Would that give you an advantage? Because that's what I'm proposing. It's free. There's no obligation. Does that sound good? Hope that helps. Okay, our next is a request to role play. We have Colleen Bush. Your line is open. Hi. Hello, good morning. Good morning. I'd like to do a role play for gold leads. Okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to hear you. I'm not sure uh, if we maybe yeah. you're speaking to your computer. Um, I'm on a phone, but 
Okay, so the computer uh, on. We'll do the best. We'll do the best we can. We'll do the best we can. Okay, so ring ring. Hello. Hello. Is this uh, James? It is all day long. Hi James. Hi, it's Colleen Bush calling from Relax. Just following up on a request that you had for evaluation of your home. Just letting you know that we're sending that out by email. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Great. And James, are you planning on making a move in the next three to six months? Uh, we don't know. It's up in the air. Uh, it's a possibility. All right. Uh, if you were to move, would you be staying in the same area? Um, we would probably be. Um, we'd be looking at Burlington, um, something a little a little closer to uh, to Toronto. Okay, and if you could wave a magic wand, James, when would you ideally like to be in your new place? Um, oh, gee, I don't, you know what, uh, you say three to six months, that's probably about right. I mean, if we're going to do it, we'll certainly do it, you know, within the next six months anyway. Okay, and James, do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? Uh, no, no, we haven't gotten that far in the process at all. All right. James, and would you like to find your home first, or would you like to sell your home first? Uh, no, no, we'll probably look around first. Um, you know, obviously, we'd like to know, you know, what price range we're looking in. So um, I just want to get a good idea of, of, you know, equity we have in in our home and what we might be able to get for it. Uh, and then we'll start, you know, we'll look around and see what's available. Um, but yeah, we're not going to put our home on the market anytime soon. We're certainly not going to do it before we find something. Uh, in Burlington first. Okay, so ideally you'd like to find something first. Uh, but you know what? There's sure. two things that we could do here, James. First of all, we can set you up so you can start receiving daily updates from all the places at home. Here. Sorry, this is really hard with the connection. <laughs> uh, we can set this up so that you can receive daily updates from all the real estate companies. And that way you'll get a priority access of all the homes that are available to you. Again, there's no cost or obligation. Would this be something that would be interesting to you? Um, yeah, yeah, right now we're just, um, you know, right now I'm just kind of, once in a while I'll go on the internet and see what's there and, uh, you know, uh, that's about it. So, um, yeah, no, that would be that would be helpful um, if I can, you know, if I can see what's available. I, I usually go on to, uh, um, uh, MLS.ca, and I could find some pretty good properties there as well. So, is this is this any different from that? Absolutely, James. What we're going to be sending you is daily updates, and you have priority access up to almost two days before it reaches Realtor.ca, and that way you don't miss out on the perfect home when it does come up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, that sounds uh, that sounds helpful. Okay, James. When would you be available for 20 minutes? Just what we'd like to do is make sure we do a really good job making sure that we know exactly what you're looking for. Again, we would take down all the details so that you would have that priority access to a tailor-made list that is exactly what you're looking for. Again, we're flexible days, evenings, weekends. What works best for you? Uh, I can tell you right now. Well, James, you know what? We find that it's great that if you and your significant other sit down, we have a lot of questions that we ask, and make sure that you're both on the same page. Again, it'll only take about 20 minutes, and it will save you a lot of time. Uh, okay. Again, this weekend, flexible, or days, evenings, weekends. Yeah, we can do it this weekend. Any, um, you know, on Saturday, probably any time after 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, well, how about we set it up for 10.30? I'll send you a confirmation to where our office is. And just one other thing I just want you to consider too, James. Uh, because you are thinking of selling your home, would it be to your advantage for us to come over and actually give you a more accurate assessment of what you could sell your home for? Again, that way we can see what you have. Uh, we can also give you some tips what to do, what not to do to get top dollar for your home when you do think about selling it. And then we can still take down everything that you're looking for. So that way you have a pulse on the market 
uh, as to what's available that's coming in daily. And also your home, you know how much you can get because we'll go over the closing costs, exactly what you'll have in your pocket when it's all said and done. Again, it's absolutely free. Just if this would be more helpful for you. Okay, so we'll do the appointment at, uh, at here instead of coming to your office? That's right. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Saturday at 1030. Sounds good. Okay, great. Okay, good. I was really hoping you're going to do that. I was I was a little worried about that because um, that's a natural. When it's a buy, it's a buyer with a home to sell, booking the appointment at their home. The, the only thing I would do, Colleen, is I would do that sooner. In other words, rather than me come up with the objection of what well, I can tell you right now, what you want to do is if you're going to make the buyer offer, you can say, now it's important that we sit down together and go over your criteria, but at the same time, I can take a look at your property and give you a very accurate uh, idea as to what your home would sell for and anything that we can do to increase the value of your property at the same time. So when would be a good time for you to get together at your home? It's free, there's no obligation, and I'm flexible. What's good e days, evenings, weekends? In other words, work in when you're, when you're booking the buyer appointment and you're saying, when's a good time to get together for 20 minutes? All at that same time, we can say, at your home, I can take a look and give you a very accurate idea of what your home would likely sell for uh, if I have a chance to see it. And that way, it takes away the objection of why do we need to meet. It completely takes away the objection of I can tell you over the phone. Because the reason for the appointment now isn't just to take down their criteria. It's, hey, while we're together, I can give you a really accurate evaluation of your property. For sure. Right. Um, so that was that was uh, needless to say excellent. Um, your phone line is anything but excellent. So I. Oh, it's uh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, but we. You know what? We got the gist. So that was really okay. really good, and I appreciate you uh, volunteering for everybody to show them how it's done. All right. Thanks so much. Hey, by the way, Colleen, how are you guys doing with the bold leads? Uh, a lot of calls, and not so many appointments. Yeah, and is that because they're early in the process, or there's just like they're lack early of motivation in the process, right now? So we've been doing bold leads for one year this month, and it has been, you know, just keeping in touch with them. They they definitely a lot of them don't have agents, so it, it's it's good that we have them on a drip program. We have a newsletter. We have them on the update of what's happening in the Hamilton market. So we have a few things to continue to build relationships. I think that without question, the, um, the, the key to determining their selling motivation or timing is to determine their buy side. So with all of those leads that you're generating from bold leads, the questions that you want to be focusing on more than anything else are questions pertaining to their buyer plans. Right, that, okay. and that, that's what I would focus on. Way, even though they're looking for an evaluation, the way that you're going to determine the timing of their sell is not by focusing on that, but by talking to them about where you would go. If where would you go if you were to, to move? Have you thought about looking? Have you started looking? Right. Uh, so, so that way we're probably going to get the ball rolling with these prospects, not as sellers first, but as buyers first. In, in most instances, that's likely what's going to happen. But if we only focus on the sell side or, or, or it's weighted to the sell side, we don't really ever get a really good clue as to what their true timing looks like because we know they're always going to push it off and make it sound like they're, they're less motivated than they really are. Excellent. That, that is a really good point because yeah. a lot of times you, the question is, are you making that move? Oh, no. You know, it's down the road. I'm going to be five years, four right. years, and they kind of blow you off, and it's kind of hard to Well, and you got to you gotta think about you got to think about what the prospect has done, right? I mean, they here's the thing with these bold leads is that they weren't actively searching for real estate when they found your ad. Right, and that's a difference. If I was like, if the ad was on Facebook, for example, I'm scrolling through the news feed on Facebook. I'm not looking for real estate information. I'm not looking to sell my home or get an evaluation. But in scrolling through Facebook, I happened to see an ad that offered an a, a, an evaluation of my property. So I decided to burn the calorie and I I clicked on the ad. Now, the 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 filter that is that is very likely separates the people that are in no way considering selling from the ones that are, is that it asks for your contact information. 
right? So most people that have no consideration to move wouldn't put in their contact details. So that is the big filter that makes these people viable. But it doesn't mean that their timing is now. Um, but there is no question, it is far less threatening to the prospect as well to focus on their, their buy side when you're asking these questions. So um, I would experiment with that. And I would ask them way more questions about, hey, have you started looking? Uh, you know, uh, you know, wh when would you start looking? What would you be looking for? Uh, when would you be looking? You know, questions about their buy side would be really helpful in getting a sense of their, uh, of their, uh, their, their true timing and motivation. Okay, that's great. And one last question regarding uh, putting their names in. We do get a lot of partial leads, so we do a lot of detective work to be able to get a phone number and yeah, well, last name. It says a lot. It's, them? It says a lot about the prospect, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way that you you got to look at it. Is um, you know the 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 act of giving up information is something that only a motivated person would do. So, so we, we, we almost can look at that and say, well, we can't be that surprised when we do all this detective work to get contact information and then that prospect proves not to be terribly motivated. It's kind of like, well, yeah, that's what I expected. Okay. Right? The most motivated prospects are the ones that will leave the most information. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate your awesome. advice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Andrea, do we have any final chat questions that we can take before we finish up here this morning? Yes, we have a, a few of our members. It's something I kind of wanted you to address how the system um, works. They're saying, what if I didn't call them or what if I couldn't get a hold of them? Couldn't I just send an email or a letter? Um, yeah, but what would that accomplish? Um, you know, I mean, we can't convert a prospect without speaking to them. And believe me, if we could, we would be doing that because then we could automate it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it, it isn't, it isn't um, proven. So send them an email saying uh, when would be a good time to get together. Send them an email saying please answer the following qualifying questions. You see how unlikely it is that a prospect would be cooperative in that. Uh, send them an email saying, hey, when, do you, when is a good time for me to call you and chat with you? Um, it doesn't bear out in, in performance. So we have to reach our prospects. And if, as long as we do everything that we can to reach the prospect, we're never going to reach all of them, but we will reach enough of them that we can keep uh, booking appointments on a very consistent basis um, you know, if we're generating leads from enough sources. So, no, there isn't an email that we can. Here's the only email that we should be sending them, and that is whatever it is that they requested in the ad. We are obligated to fulfill their request. We told them that we would, and that's what we should be sending them. And remember, when you're sending them the information, it's coming from you. So you, that is your first step in follow-up, is the first follow-up step is actually sending them the information that they're looking for, and it's coming from you. So you're immediately branding yourself as the provider of that information. <clears throat> next question. Our next question from Christy, it says, where do I find the form that we are supposed to fill out and take down their criteria? Uh, well, it's, it, the form is, your, is on, on your MLS. So in other words, if I were to go into your MLS and I were to set up an automated property search okay, through your MLS computer, what information would it ask me? What would it ask me? Area? Would it ask price range? Would it ask bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage? What, what are the, how many different fields of criteria would you need to fill out to fulfill the daily property search that you set up through your MLS? Okay? That quote form, the, the criteria fields, is what we're talking about. That is what you're going to fill out for the prospect to set up the automated searches. Hope that helps. Okay. Another one of our questions was, where do we find the reports and information that we are sending them? And that would be in the ad generator. And I'm going to save this question because that'll be something that we can discuss on tomorrow's marketing clinic. Yes. Don't forget, tomorrow is the um, the ad clinic session. So upload your ads today, 
any ads that you'd like us to take a look at, especially the ones that are working really well, because perhaps we can improve them. Um, upload them, and we'll take a look at them. Craig and I will be on the on the ad clinic session tomorrow, eight o'clock Pacific time, eleven a.m. Eastern time, and we'll uh, really look forward to that. Um, Andrea, thanks so much for your help today. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the role play session today. We had some good ones for sure. Great questions, good volunteers and all that stuff. Uh, so we'll do it again next Thursday as we do every Thursday and have for a long, long time now. Um, Andrea, thanks so much for your help. And that concludes today's session. Thank you, James. Thank you everyone for joining. Talk to you all in tomorrow's marketing clinic. Have a great afternoon.